I think that that's interesting, um, especially the digitalization, because now it's the trend of the digital water in general for either water treatment or wastewater treatment. How you see the future of the digital water? So it's, it's slowly evolving. I think we started 15 years ago doing electronic products and, and they become more and more digital. Yep. Meaning that uh, the electronics became digital, the, the data that the product can give to systems uh, are more and more intelligent. Um, so, um, so all these data, of course, are being yet now connected. So that gives a lot of knowledge into into how systems are run. Yep. And and typically when you when you look at dynamic data in a, in a water treatment system or an energy system, that make, makes you realize a lot of new things. Yes. Be, yeah. Because before we, we only looked at the pump from time to time or the water treatment system from time to time. But now we have data all the time and, and you actually get the um, new experiences and new knowledge and, and, and we, we can make things much more efficient and these kind Absolutely. of things. Absolutely, especially on the, the risk situation, risk assessment situation, if there is an emergency or something like that, you get notified in that. Exactly, and you, and you can act faster. You can act online, but you can also act remote. Yes. Which is uh, a, a big, big advantage for not only municipalities, but also industries that, that are, you know, many, many industries relying on, on water for their production. So, um, so, so that's really where we are right now. Yeah. And of course, that, that keeps evolving. And, um, and of course, uh, when we do research in this area, we rely more and more on uh, expert systems and, and these kind of things to, to look at the data and, and get new knowledge out of our, our experience, experiments. Yep. It was actually quite interesting uh, here at the IWA uh, conference. We, um, uh, I was with a team that uh, arranged an industrial forum yesterday. Okay. And there was um, there was a, a, a guy, Elaine from from Xylem. He had made some new uh, tests on cooling towers. Cooling towers are, are one of these industrial applications that use most water. Yes, um, but uh, but he he had made some full scale tests, and in order to just investigate the data, they needed the uh, expert systems, and that made the data treatment way quicker than than we could normally do it. So these kind of things comes in. Yes, and. Who knows? Whatever comes in in a couple of years, I mean. Exactly. With that, that kind of revolution, technology and artificial intelligence, after two years, you don't know what, how, how it's going to yeah. be. The but for sure, the loop going back into improving products are getting quicker and quicker because we get more and more data. So that has been one of the biggest changes, I think, for, for developable mental our products. I, I, I totally agree with you on that. Maybe about a little bit uh, burden on the companies like, like you, they have to really be up to date and uh, go uh, with that new concept because other competitors are there as well. So if I'm a utility or I'm a customer and looking for a bump systems and whatever the, the, the type, why would I choose Grandfoss? So, um, so the, the value proposition of Gronfoss has always been high quality products. The other um, area that Gronfoss always has been, uh, been developing is energy efficient products. Okay. So actually with the newest product that Gronfoss uh, has on the market, we, we can save up to 30 to 40% of energy. By, by integrating electronics in, in our pumps, but also looking at the dynamics of the systems. So that would be another reason to, uh, to look and, and, and many pumps in, in the municipalities are, are big and using a lot of energy. So, and the third thing that we, uh, 
we always have have done in Gornfors is that we, even the comp the products get more and more complex, we would like them to be easy to use. Thanks. So sometimes that can be profiles in in the product itself, but it could also be using apps or connecting them to a, to a cloud system where where you can have ag algorithms that, that will make that. So I would say high quality products, energy efficient products, and, uh, and easy to use and integrate. And how is the service after um, selling? Are you providing that service? We are providing service. Goldfoss is a global company and the world is not uh, <laughs> functioning the same way in all different countries. Regions, yes. So of course we... Uh, we have to do the service uh, in a way that uh, the market is structured, but also how the NGOs are in expecting it. So, for instance, in in Europe, we will we will do service very direct, okay, with Gonfa's own service technician. But um, uh, but maybe in the US, where we uh, are more structured in distribution and and oh. these kind of things, then we will provide service with. Authorized service partners that typically okay. is our our reps. Okay. Um, so, but but for sure we need to the, we need to yes have <laughs> service and make that available. So, uh, and then um, new products they they we can also service different. So we can uh, connect them to the cloud and then monitor it remotely, and that means we also able remotely. And this is the beauty of the exactly to uh, to provide service. So either if that is when we commission it, or when when it's running, or yeah. when when the product need to change the spare part, or these kind of things. So um, so that's a big difference in the way we we can service products. So so you mentioned that the, the service model and definitely the model is different if you are dealing in Europe. Yeah. country or versus North America or other. So what is the, the main market for ground force? Is it mainly in Europe or the, your customers are mainly where? Yeah, so um, I was mentioning ground force is the world's biggest pump company. Yes. And, uh, and we have pumps that go into applications in many different customer verticals. Oh. So ground force is split into uh, four divisions. So we have a, a, a municip municipal division that's primarily serving municipal customers. Then we have an industrial uh, division, primarily serving industrial customers, which I'm part of, I'm okay. a, in, in industry. Then we have a division that is uh, serving uh, commercial buildings like hospitals mm -hmm. and hotels and these kind of things. And then we have a division that is serving uh, domestic customers with different things. So, um, so one of the big inventions many years ago for Gronfors, that was a circulation pump that circulates hot water and cold water at domestic uh, applications, and, but also at commercial buildings. Uh, so there we have a strong base of that, of course, in Europe. Yeah. And, and being in... Denmark-based uh, company, uh, Europe is still one of our uh, strong markets. Um, the, the next uh, biggest market is, is USA. And, and for Grundfos, these two markets are extremely important. We, um, we feel that our products uh, has a good value proposition to these markets, but, uh, but also these two markets are, uh, are strong in terms of of pumps and but also water treatment. Then um, we're definitely also uh, serving Asia and China, um, and uh, and they're they're growing also. But the biggest, the two biggest market right now is is Europe and and the US or as, Americas. As, as Gronfos is one of the largest company, if it's not the largest company, and producing pumps. Yeah, and. Everything is not going smooth. There are some challenges. So what are the challenges that you see for the pump production sector in the future? Luckily, um, many of, you know, hydraulic systems, they are functioning because you can put in energy. 
I'm an engineer, so we, we talk about energy. And you can put in energy in different ways. Uh, hydraulic energy, we, we use pumps, or it can be thermal energy that use heat, uh, or it can be chemistry that is conditioning the water in different ways. So, so luckily I see that that we need to still move a lot of water coming in the, in the future. So uh, I'm not so concerned about the pump market. The pump market will, will be there. Um, but we need, we need to make it efficient. And um, because a lot of energy is used in moving water around in the world. We're getting more and more people. They need more and more water. Industry is getting bigger and bigger. They need more and more water. So another challenge is that uh, we simply do not have enough water for all these kind of applications. So we need to look at the, at the water sector in a different way. Locally reuse water and, and these kind of things. So, you know, some years ago we were relying on nature to clean the water. So. Now. Now we use Love too much water, more. so we, we need to, to reuse and clean it. So there will be a lot of new technologies that, that we need for, for that space. And, and I think that's the challenge yeah. for the world. And, and I think we in Grundfos are positioned to, to help doing something about it. Actually, the purpose of Grundfos is not really pumps. We, we have a purpose that says that we, um, we want to pioneer uh, solutions that can help solve the water and climate problems. So, um, so we are very open also to go into other areas uh, if that is needed for, for solving water and climate uh, issues. But, uh, but right now, uh, our strong right to play is our extremely powerful pumps. Uh, but the technology we have today, compared to 10 years ago, can save a lot of energy. Um, and, um, and we actually signed up for the science-based target initiative in, okay. in Grundfos. Um, because we want to be a strong player or we have a strong incentive via our purpose to to save energy, and and we signed up for for the UN uh, uh, Global Goals six and thirteen as well. So so we um, so we have a, a strong portfolio of technology that actually can can help reducing uh, the carbon footprint drastically. So it's a little like a light bulb. Ten years ago, yeah, requires sixty watt. Nowadays, today it's only six. Yeah, and it's the same with with the pumps that, that we have in Grundfos, we if you required one kilowatt for 15 years ago, now you only require maybe 600 watts. So so there is technology uh, at hand that we we can bring down the, the carbon footprint. And I think the same will happen with water over the next couple of years. We need to be able to find solutions that you know saves water and recycles water, either in industry or in communities. Okay.